Hi, I'm Matty and welcome to an episode of our Archive Dive. This week we're going to talk about the 70s. Uh, as you remember, um, at the end of the 60s we'd kind of had this amazing kind of counterculture, turn on tune and drop out. Um, and that really, really did kind of last for quite a few years up into the early 70s. What was really great about that time was that it, it was so, 70s is one of my favourites. Uh, and the reason was is because it took quite a lot of inspiration from previous decades, but matched it with this phenomenal use of colours and wild prints and fabrics. Um, so the first couple of things that I want to show you that we've got in our archive. There was a really great little company called Sunday's Child from California. We've got a few things about them on our archive. But what I really love is this kind of like little tie top, which would have been really, I guess, kind of, it's almost like a heart back to kind of 40s, Hawaiians in a way um, with this really great again we talked about how we started to see the um, the hems drop again in the 70s what's so great about this is if you look at the way that it's actually cut we see a lot of those really interesting kind of biases um, and really interesting pattern cutting that we saw in the 20s and 30s um, so they, they, again, they were kind of looking, harking right back to the 30s and, uh, and, and the 20s as well. And again, you can kind of see, uh, again, with some of these, we've almost got, kind of like got 20s and deco imagery here, um, alongside these crazy newer prints uh, of the time. And obviously, we start to see, as I mentioned before, these really gorgeous kind of like earthier tones. So this really, as, as a two piece, it's actually really a, um, a really good example of where we were going. Um, we, I didn't even realize we had these in here, but what was really great about the 70s, again, we talk about the hippie thing, was the fact that it actually spawned quite a lot of kind of like homemaking and home crafts um, back again. And patchwork especially was a really, really big thing. So it actually took quite a lot of time to do, um, but things like this, these pair of trousers are absolutely wild. Um, and again, even though you can see quite a lot of bright, bright colours in there, um, for the most part, they are kind of like an earthier tone. So you can definitely see that colour shift from uh, from those mid-60s ones. And then, and then just to finish, another one here, uh, which would have taken quite a lot of time to do. By this time as well, what's really interesting to know, and this is a really great way of dating dresses, by this point we'd kind of, um, we'd gone back into plastic zippers. So plastic zippers were kind of, uh, for the most part, they were actually invented in the 30s, but they're quite prohibitive. <coughs> uh, the first one, the first people to use them um, was Schiaparelli, um, who was a huge, amazing designer in the 30s, of amazing culture stuff. Check her out, because her designs are just wild and beautiful. She did loads of stuff with Salvador Dali. Um, and she actually got asked by a company, a zipper company, um, to kind of use this brand new technology of plastic zippers uh, in her designs, and she did, uh, but it was really prohibitive. So we go back to that now because the production of plastic zippers uh, was a lot cheaper than it was. Um, and also what it meant was uh, we could have different colours um, and they could dye the plastics. So it was great because we're instead of like a, just a normal metal zipper that we kind of just used to paint almost, uh, we've now got kind of matching metal zipper, uh, matching plastic zippers uh, that match the garment completely. So it's a nice little fact for you. Um, Again, we kind of go back into Sunday's Child again. Um, I really love this label. But what's really cute about this is that it's really sweet. Yes, it is a little bit shorter, but we start to see this like real influence of um, these oranges and earthy tones. We start to get to this kind of romanticism in the 70s of um, uh, Victoriana uh, and <coughs> Bohemia, really. Uh, these are a really great example of um, kind of late 60s, early 70s. One day I hope I own these. Um, but the amount of work that went into these, and they were dead, there's no makers mark in these, so they were definitely homemade. Um, you know, somebody would have tiled hard at their machine to make these, but a really great example of, um, of how, at the time, we were kind of, you know, that whole kind of like hippie, it was like, yeah, I don't want to buy anything from, from the shops, so I'm just gonna make it myself out of everything that I could find around the house. Uh, so that's a really beautiful pair of amazing wide leg trousers. 
Um, and again, we kind of see it as well in the shirt. It's interesting this because it almost looks like a 50s one. And part of me was like, is it 50s, is it not? Um, but even if it's not, um, it's a really good example uh, of that patchwork print um, that we think. Um, so as I said, we kind of like, we had these earthy tones and this kind of moves towards bohemianism. Um, and this dress in particular is really great and it's got so many different details. Um, it's got this like amazing column shape to it. It's ruched here so there are kind of like almost 30s details in it. Um, there was a lot of knitwear, kind of like knits in the 70s, you'll see that. Um, but it's great with this, these beautiful two straps. Um, so it's a shame because it's a little bit marked, but it's what's really interesting mix of fabrics. So you kind of got this poly here um, and this knitwear, and then bizarrely, this amazing, um, this amazing cotton here uh, with this beautiful embroidery in, in these like really, really lovely autumnal winter colors. So in terms of kind of like 70s long dresses, really good example. Uh, same with this one as well. Um, the print on this is just, wonderful it's so great and again when we look at the actual pattern cutting of this we can see again some of those 30s details and pattern cutting uh, that we saw that was so prominent i mean like it's actually very difficult to make this dress because it's cut in an asymmetric bias cut which gives it the opportunity to have a little bit more floaty and that's what we were looking for so we kind of went from this uh, this kind of like short kind of um 20s kind of um, no wasted thing of the 60s and then we started to get into these incredible floaty fabrics um, loads and loads of chiffon more chiffon than you can shake a stick at um, and a lot more length so we end up with again these kind of like really dark darker colors um, and the autumnal rather than the bright pops of the 60s um, and this especially um, it's just a great example of a lovely kind of like 70s evening dress. You can imagine somebody floating around their little flat uh, in the mid 70s in that. It's fabulous. Um, caftans were really, really big in the 70s. Just these huge, huge, oversized, you know, it didn't matter anymore. You know, there was just like, it was all about comfort really um, in, a, in a lot of ways. And we still see... Um, Again, still great designs, super, super designs uh, on polyesters that are going nowhere. What's really interesting actually about this is that these sleeves are really similar to the paquet moves that you would see in the 40s, in 40s Hawaiian. So have a look at those, have a, have a Google of paquet mou uh, and you'll see where those, uh, those shapes came from. Uh, just in a completely dis dis disconstructed, deconstructed way. Uh, same again with this which is just a mad piece, almost like a dinner lady's tabard. <laughs> um, but again, it's just all about comfort. You know, you can put it over your head, really beautiful. We've got all these fantastic prints. A again, a little bit like, kind of like Peter Max, but not quite as intense um, in really, really lovely colors. Last one for that. Really, really love this. Um, it's like, it's really gorgeous raw silk. Um, and it's it's just so symptomatic of kind of like kind of early to mid 70s I guess because we've got this like really this beautiful print but again it's like the, the actual colour scheme is quite subdued um, this almost kind of like harks back to 20s um, and you've got these fantastic fantastic cuffs this beautiful edging on which would have been full back cuffs Order. Same again with this. This is just fantastic. Look like how much fabric there is there. All this amazing ruching around the top. Again, in these kind of like browns, earthier colours, uh, with a little bit of shot of Lurex. Lurex became even bigger in the 70s, especially in shirts. I don't know if you might have seen my little shirt collection. Um, but I'm a really, I really, really love this. Um, it became super itchy, but loads of fun. And again, we've got that length. It was just this kind of this part of the decade was just like all about um, uh, being, for, for the most part, 
and not all of it we still got kind of got our super tight jeans we've still got our skinny t-shirts um but you know the offshoot of that um the offset of that was this like really really massive um voluminous thing. i really love this one as well uh, there's something really beautiful about this this is kind of like this is probably only 70s to be honest especially the length perhaps late like 60s but again we've got that plastic zipper uh, which has been dyed exactly the color the same color as the as a chiffon so really gorgeous just a certain romanticism in there it's almost like a damsel in distress uh, this i really love so when we talk about knits kind of like we had a lot of knit work come through um and the, the design on this is absolutely stunning obviously kind of eastern inspired um but done in its own little way again kind of like really high <coughs> really high waisted what was really um a good way to to spot a good 70s dress is to see um the, the you'll see the waistband pretty much almost under bust and you'll see um kind of like this column uh this column dress all the way to the floor uh bell sleeves as well really big indicator of a good 70s dress or shirt um and that's really amazing the last one that i'm going to show you um it's a really great example of how the 30s and the 40s really influenced um, <clears throat> certainly design. Um, check out some people like Ozzy Clark, um, who had you know huge, huge influences from the 30s, um, and people like Tommy Nutter, who was an amazing ta men's tailor. He did things for um, Bowie and Mick Jagger, uh, and he just took loads of 40s suits uh, and did them in really, really interesting ways my favorite like my favorite tailor but this is great so what we've got here is this like really beautiful long dress <clears throat> but we've got all these like this pleat in here um over the arm which is really really reminiscent of 30s and this great little tie front here which when you look at this amazing dress here so we've got all the same details so this is from kind of like mid 40s so <clears throat> Well, early 40s perhaps so you've got this amazing pleating detail over there and we've got the same lace front detail so you can uh, but again in this like really lovely autumnal prints uh, and autumnal colors so you can really really see in the 70s this re this um kind of hark back uh, to kind of earlier earlier patterns so hopefully we're going to do a part two when we talk about Studio 54 and all the amazing disco stuff that came in the late part of the decade. Thank you.